right, and now we are in the second of my Friday the 13th characters ranked video. Um, the second video in the video series, I mean. And that would be uh, 172 to 144. Um, there's about, there's 28 people in each video and 29 and half of them, 28 and half of them. And I'm going to have the last video be the top 13, which means there's going to be like 16 in the second to last video or something, because it just didn't add up. But when I did divided it, it like it was like 28 point something. So I think the last one had 28 placements and this one has 29. We'll see how, we'll see how this goes. Uh, but for now, popping right back into this shit. Forward momentum, 172, Donnie, a character from the remake that gets his throat slit. He's the guy Jason gets his mask from in the remake. While on the subject of the remake, um, now Jason obviously is played by a shitload of actors. <laughs> a fucking truckload of actors. I am not going to rank them all separately in this video. In this ranking, if a character is in the original series and in the remake, those will be ranked separately. Because a character ranking, I have to take into account everything they've done, how they act, how they, what they've been through, and just how I feel about them. But it's hard to do that when it's like, okay, well in this movie, nothing else that he's done has happened. He's a different age, he's, he, he's gone through slightly different things. So for this, Mrs. Voorhees will show up twice, and Jason will show up twice. The remake Jason... And then everything Jason's done in 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's all looped together. Up next, 171 is Robert Campbell from Jason Goes to Hell. This guy is a sick fuck. He's a newscaster, so you already know he's bad news. <laughs> I didn't even mean to make a pun about that. Uh, he's, uh, he's an awful, awful human being. He's, he's like, trying, he, he's like, he's with this girl, right? And then, he steals, he steals Diana's body and hides it in the fucking closet so that he can get, so that he can get views. And then, he went home and fucked her daughter. Like, it's, it's so bad. He's such an awful character. And, uh, the characters that get possessed by Jason, I'm only considering things they do outside of, like, the possession itself. Let me say, obviously, uh, Robert Campbell as the newscaster is my favorite of the Jasons in possession form. Like, Phil, the coroner, Josh, they're about equally bad to me. Phil's a little better. The corner and the cop, Jason. Um, I fucking hate Randy, Jason. The And I really like uh, newscaster, Jason. But their rankings as characters in, in and of themselves is completely different because I'm not considering anything they do after they're possessed as part of their character. So, And when I ranked the Jasons, which hasn't come out, and, and, and uh, oh, I ranked the looks, actually. But that also still hasn't come out. And I'm, I don't even know if I have that video. I might have to just redo it. The, the point being is that no matter how much I like this guy is possessed to Jason, I don't like the character at all. We got 170 now. And you can all stop bitching because we finally put Trent from the remake on the list. He's not a good person, but my god, is he funny. You fucking tits are just so juicy, dude. <laughs> Calls her dude. Uh, I fucking love that movie, dude. I love that character, but I also hate that character. <laughs> because the guy's funnier than hell, but he's such a dick. Like, I just... Uh, he's so fun to hate. And being fun to hate gets you ranked higher than being... An okay person, but just a nothing character. 
number 169, <laughs> we have Nolan, who is the blonde dude in the Friday the 13th remake, a.k.a. the most forgettable dude in the Friday the 13th remake. He's gets the shot with an arrow. He's there, there's, He has a couple funny moments, but he's kind of a douchebag. You can tell, like... You can tell why him and Trent are friends. Like, the minute, like, like the minute Trent's like, "Don't take my boat out," no one's like, dead set on taking the boat out. Like, he's not a great dude, and he's also just kind of dumb. But again, there's some really funny moments with that guy. Really funny moments. And one sixty-eight, we have Luke, who's one of he's the male of the three uh, horny. Uh, young adults in Jason Goes to Hell. He's the male in that group. Um, not a lot to him, but my god, is that one of the best sex scenes ever? <laughs> so, I don't know how much that has to do with putting him this high. They seem like they were having a lot of fun and they'd be fun to hang out with, so that could also be it, but yeah, no, he's he's here. He's a kind of a nothing character. Doesn't really do anything offensive or wrong. It's hard to not think. It's hard to watch that scene now and not think about the fact that the actors fucking were real life exes at the time they filmed that, who got the roles separately. That's genius, mind boggling. That's just the universe. The universe did that on purpose. You know it. And now, one sixty seven is. Sean, the main male guy, male guy, duh, <laughs> the, the main guy in Friday the 13th, 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. This guy has no fucking character, he's annoying, he's kind of fucking, kind of, no, he is fucking stupid, overdramatic, kind of whiny, and douchey. Moving on. 166, we have Tamara, or Tamara, Tamara, Tam Tamara, whatever the fuck. Uh, the evil bitch that tried to push Rennie to her death. Like, she pushed Rennie into the ocean just because, and now she'll drown and die. I mean, she's an evil, awful person, and the whole bitch trope, uh, mean girl trope, whatever you want to call it, it gets old. I mean... She's the second character, like, the, the seven and eight both have a complete bitch character. And this is one is just way less memorable and impactful. And, and, you know, it could be just because she lasts, like, not even a third of the amount of time, but, you know. At 165 is her friend Eva, who gets choke slammed. Well, not choke slam, but like choked and then slammed. That was fun. But she's complicit. She may not have wanted to harm Rennie, but she's complicit. And that's really all there is to her, is that she's friends with that bitch. So she's got to be at least bitch-ish. At 164 is Jim Carlson. Usually I'll just say the first name, and then the movie they're from, if there's multiple people who have the same name. But Jason Takes Manhattan has two dudes named Jim in it. This is the guy that you didn't know had a name who gets killed in the bridge. Uh, he gets killed in, the, in like the, the part of the boat with the fucking steering wheel. He gets stabbed through the window. It's silent. That guy. There's he, He's really... Barely deserves to even be on this list. I honestly, in hindsight, probably shouldn't have even included him. But I did, and here he ranked. I don't know why. I guess he's just, like... He's just doing his job. He, like, he's wrong place, wrong time. 163. Um, we have Roy from the sixth movie. Who is the clownish... Uh, silent comedy... Starring uh, Peyton Baller guy. He's funny, very dorky, but he's very in insignificant to the movie. At 162, 
we have Larry, one of the triple decapitation people. And I will say right now, 161 is Stan and 160 is Kate from the sixth movie. All three of the triple decapitation, all three of them are right here, one by one. Uh, the worst of them is the whiny dude. You come a whole different person when we're out here, Stan. I don't like it. Like, ugh, I don't like that scene. <laughs> but, no, it's fine. I mean, it's kind of funny. But, no, I he's the worst of the three. His buddy's slightly better, and she's better than both of them. But they all can't come any farther than this in the ring. She actually seemed kind of cool. 159, Kinza, who did not seem cool, because she tried to ditch everyone to, for death, and in because she tried to leave everyone for dead, she died. She doesn't really do anything. She's horny for one scene, then she's traumatized and crying for the rest of the movie, and then at the end she, like, ditches everyone and blows up. Not a great character, but ha she uh, she was hot. But that, you know that's not really there's not that's not really going to get you very high on this list on its own. At one fifty eight is Alexis, who is the chick in Jason Goes to Hell that's in that trio, who is not in the sex scene, the one that's trying to bang Stephen. Um. Yeah, there's not a lot to her character, but she's very attractive. And, uh, she seemed fun, though. Like, she went, she's like, she went out with her friends and went skinny dipping, and then while they're fucking, she's just like, oh, you guys. Like, she seemed fun. She seemed chill. And I kind of, like, it was kind of endearing the way she was trying to get Steven to come with. It wasn't, like, overtly pervy. It was more of, like, a, like, come have fun kind of thing. Not that I'd really have an issue with if she was overtly pervy because there's definitely some pervs on this list that are way higher than this but she's also only in like two scenes and they're back to back so it's basically like one scene 157 Chelsea uh, Nolan's girlfriend the blonde chick with the with <laughs> with the tits uh, when she gets stabbed and then lifted up so you can see uh being hot but not having a character can only get you so far on this list. 156, we have Kia. Um, Freddy versus Jason. Kelly Rowland. Um, she has some questionable lines towards the end of that movie. That, uh, while laugh out loud funny when I'm five in 2005, uh, hit differently uh, 20 years after the movie came out. <laughs> um... That's part of it. She's also just kind of annoying. Uh, she's like the she's she's the least likable of the characters that aren't like evil in that movie. <laughs> I still love the movie, and she doesn't detract from the movie in any way to me. But as if I'm gonna rank her amongst these characters, this is as high as she's getting. One fifty five, Mr. Campbell, Laurie's dad from Freddy vs. Jason. The human antagonist that didn't need to be there um while he's kind of an asshole he he's doing good things he's trying to he's trying to make freddy extinct and if he's got to like he got it's he's like a disease you got to quarantine off the people give the people that are already have him medicine to get rid of it but don't let them go anywhere near anyone else because we can't afford the medicine He's a very strict, straightforward, smart. If he had any like communication skills or the 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 forethought to talk to his daughter like she's not fucking two, like you can explain why you're asking her to do the things you're asking her. It's not too much to do, and I understand that. He, like, I understand also though that like him letting her know what the pills he's asking her to take are and why he's asking her to take them might reinforce Freddy's power or it might, or she, he doesn't know that she's already dreaming of him. So maybe he's trying to take preventative action. And if he explains what's going on and why it might start trouble before it even 
you know, like, there's a whole bunch of, there's a myriad of reasons, very complex character, but he's, he's getting this low. And right above him is a character who has no right being above him, but he is. 154 is Mr. Mueller, and I know you don't know who the fuck that is. He's Blake's dad. No, you still don't know who that is? Okay, well, he's the guy in Freddy vs. Jason. He's the dad who, like, Blake wakes up, and he shakes his dad's shoulder, and the dude's head just pops off. He's kind of a dick in that first scene, but he has a real point to what he's saying. But the second he realizes that it's not the right time, his friend just died, the second he realizes that he's like, okay, and he leaves his son alone, that alone gives him more points than fucking Laurie's dad. At 153, we got Bad News Cruz. Evil dude. Um, evil dude. But again, being evil and central to the plot is better than being like morally good or gray and having one scene where you die. So Cruz he is evil, <laughs> but he's entertainingly evil too. Like obviously Tina wouldn't be there or be able to channel her powers as well if Cruz wasn't doing what he was doing to torment her. And yes, it's evil, but I'm a viewer in a movie and I want her to do the crazy psychic shit. So you got to take you take it with the good with the bad. Like <laughs> at number one fifty two, Melissa, the bitch from Seven. Um, need I say more? I do think that she's. I love how she plays the bitchy though, but she it's still a bitch. At one fifty one, rum. Mm. Lou, and Lou's the guy with the cowboy hat flying the spaceship in Jason X. He's lonely, but he can laugh about it. And that's about all you know. But, honestly, that's all you need to know. There's a lot of characters in Jason X that don't matter, and it's hard to really distinguish which ones deserve to be on the list and which ones don't. But I just kind of cut it off. I just cut it off with the grunts. Because, <laughs> like... Lou at least got his own death scene. You know, even if it was off screen. And he was way more distinguished. But, you know, that's where he lands. 150, we got another character from Jason X. Stoney. Um, Kinza's boyfriend. He's just horny, and then he dies. There's not a lot to him. But, you know, he seemed okay. I don't know. Like... At a certain point, we're splitting hairs and really deciding, like, well, why is this character above this character? And it's like, well, sometimes it's there's not a reason. It's just preference. At 149, Enos, I think our first character from the first movie that pop up, and he is uh, Mr. Exposition. Um, I like the character, but if I'm going to rank him amongst all the other characters, there's just not... He doesn't do a lot. Like, he's he explains, like, you know, two kids murdered in 58, boy drowning in 57, bunch of fires. Nobody knows who did any of them. Like, like yeah, I like the character, but he's such a small piece of that movie. And compared to everyone else that's left, you know, it's, it's a bit, you know, I don't know. He's not higher. 148 is Bree, who is like, the hottest chick in the movie, uh, the Friday the 13th remake, um, damn, and she, uh, fucks her friend's boyfriend, and not only does she do that, but her, but the guy is Trent, like, is she deaf and blind, or dumb, because... He clearly doesn't deserve to have any sex. I don't know. The questions you ponder yourself. But no, she seemed really fun. 147 is uh, Admiral Robertson. The guy that drives the boat in Jason Takes Manhattan. He seemed like he was an okay dad to the his kid who's like the worst survivor in the movies, but you know, 
whatever. <laughs> He's yeah. One forty six. We got Susie. Yeah, I know you don't know who that is. Is she's the chick that gets killed at the beginning of the eighth movie? With the boyfriend who has the mask, she's that. She's that chick. She has. She's very forgettable. But you know, she doesn't piss me off. So. One. Well, no. The scene where she's dies, she does kind of piss me off because she does. She's just sitting there, like while he's slowly doing it. But I don't know if it's her pissing me off for not moving. Jason pissing me off for just going too slow, or the movie pissing me off for the whole scene. I'm gonna go with the movie. And at 145, we have Adrian. She's sympathetic to Jason when she sees his fugly ass face. And she's really annoyed with Stoney and Kinza when they're trying to fuck basically right there on the corpse. So... That's really all there is to her. She's in one scene. I can't put her much higher. And the last character in this um, video of the ranking. Uh, Marcus from the ninth movie. Jason goes to hell. The chick at the beginning who's an FBI agent. Um, not a lot of scenes. But baller to volunteer for that job. I mean, fuck, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's not every day you're... Well, it, hopefully, it's not every day that your FBI boss comes in and is like, I need you to strip down and get into a shower. But, that's this section of the ranking. We're slowly but surely getting closer and closer to the better and better characters, as, as rankings ought to do. Um... But yeah, no, this is... It's kind of getting difficult to think of what to even say for some of these characters because it's like... Like, what do you say about fucking Lou? <laughs> like, or fucking Stony? I don't know. They're there. <laughs> they don't piss me off, but they don't make me cheer. So they're... they're that's kind of where we are at the ranking right now. So... Yeah. Like, subscribe, all that bullshit. Stick around till you get to the top 13 characters. It's going to be controversial as fuck. <laughs>